Hello, and welcome back to Kaylee Daily. Today's question is, what is evidence-based birth childbirth education? And we will be joined by yet another wonderful special guest. This is Kaylee Daily, the bi-weekly podcast about all things doula tips and tits, where we answer one question about pregnancy, labor, postpartum, or lactation in order to have your journey in this parenting world be just a little bit more informed and filled with consent. Hello, welcome back to Kaylee Daily. I'm Kaylee Harad, the host and author of this beautiful podcast, and we are continuing on our childbirth education series, diving into a couple different forms of childbirth education that I do not teach and am not trained in. And so we have another special guest, which I'm so pumped about. Leslie Green is here with us. And um, on top of being a childbirth educator, she holds so many different amazing skills <laughs> and <laughs> titles that she can decide which of those she wants to share with us. Um, but she, she teaches the childbirth education that is from the evidence-based birth um company and you have heard me talk about that company if you've been around for any of my other episodes because i love that resource so today's question is pretty basic what is evidence-based birth um childbirth education and i'm going to hand it over to leslie to kind of give us a little rundown of her background and then to answer that question for us hello kaylee thanks for having me here i'm so glad to join you um it's a little dangerous i think that you just like are letting me talk on my own but <laughs> it's okay um because i can talk a long time about many many things but um i can stay focused so i can tell you that yes i do i am an evidence-based birth instructor and i will answer your question and focus on <laughs> on that, but I can tell you a little bit where I come from. Um, I identify as a um, doula, I guess, or birth Mm -hmm. worker, Um, Mm -hmm. but I do work as a birth and postpartum doula. I like to think of myself as a postpartum centric um, doula. Mm -hmm. Um, I am Lamaze trained and also an evidence-based birth educator. I'm also a baby wearing consultant. I am working on my um, lactation specialist certification. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? A placenta <laughs> encapsulator. Yeah. Um, the way I, I do all of these things inside of the title of doula, um, because yeah. I feel like, um, well, I don't feel like I do really like to be able to support families through their whole perinatal period. Um, I have supported some families who are um, in the conception phase. It's not like my specialty. It's something I'd like to learn more about. Um, mm-hmm. There, I do want to support in the future younger people, or also mm-hmm. adults, learning about um, our menstrual cycles and how they work. It's something I'm working on for myself. So um, really, I do think of the birth work as being a life skill that um, most of us in America don't currently have access to. And so bringing that to the community is really important to me. I also am black and I'm from, um, well, I identify as a southerner, even though technically I'm not from the South, but uh, my family is from (laughs) lower Alabama. Uh, So I do look at everything from a lens of, yep. of of um, perspective. I do also do a lot of work with um, traditional birth workers like indigenous Americans and also um, indigenous Mesoamerican, like Mexican style uh, postpartum care. Um, mm-hmm. I do really believe that growing up and being of the United States for many, many, many generations, um, the people mm-hmm. who have worked this land before we did, I, I really identify with that work. So um, I'm mm-hmm. really into um, a lot of the traditional work. I do believe that you mm-hmm. need to stay in bed for uh, a month or two after you've had a baby. And I mm-hmm. do like to help facilitate that. And um, I do believe in birth work as being a very spiritual experience. And as um, in real life, I mean, like outside of that, um, <laughs> I am trained as a beauty technician, right? I'm yeah. almost 20 years in, 
uh, as being an esthetician. Um, mm -hmm. I specialize in doing lash extensions. So I do have a studio where I, I do some lashes and facials still. Um, mm -hmm. I am a single mom to a uh, six-year-old boy, the only mm -hmm. boy in our family. So he may or may not be rotten, but oh, depends man. on your perspective. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so uh, all of these give me um, uh, uh, a perspective that um, I will say that when I was pregnant, my partner, my son's father uh, was severely disabled cognitively and uh, and I was always the breadwinner. And so, um, and I am college educated, like these are my privileges. I am uh, cisgendered and heterosexual. So mm -hmm. I have these privileges and I've also grown up in the DC area, but um, a lot of, to me when I was planning my birth and having my um, early parenting experience, even today, um, as a mom of a first grader, everything kind of didn't fit very well. Mm -hmm. You know, the fit was off. Uh, I wanted to have a doula, but I didn't have the financial resources to get one. I'm an auntie. I'm not young. I had a quote unquote advanced maternal age. So uh, <laughs> I had plenty of experience and, and I thought I had very realistic expectations. I did take workshops. I did have peer counselors. And I was still completely shocked um, and unprepared for the experiences I ended up having. And I still carry some, I don't want to say trauma, I guess disappointment, but I guess maybe it's trauma since <laughs> it still rides mm -hmm. with me from my birth experience. And, and, it, and it shouldn't have been that way. Um, mm -hmm. I came into birth work, I was not interested in it, but I came into it um, in July or June of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, I was called into the work, like a lot of us are called into it, mm -hmm. um, right around George Floyd time. Um, there mm -hmm. were a lot of signs. I am not religious, but I did have a lot of signs that almost made me religious that said I had to come into birth work. Um, I mm -hmm. learned in college in the 90s about the Black maternal health crisis. Yep. And uh, in D.C., a lot of people don't know that in D.C., it's just as bad as it is in, in lower Alabama, which is rural. Yeah. And it's shocking because it's, you know, our understanding back then was that it's because of the type of mothers or the type of people um, mm -hmm. these people were and how they weren't taking care of themselves and they weren't getting the right education and they were criminals and drug addicts and teen right. moms and all of this. And mm -hmm. um, when the George Floyd and Black Lives Matter uh, came up, I learned a lot more that it's not that at mm -hmm. all it's because of systemic racism yeah. and and our whole maternal health system is just outrageously um inappropriate and it's a bad fit for almost everybody that goes through it <laughs> um especially <Preach. laughs> black people yeah and thinking yeah. that i'm college educated with these privileges um and i still was victimized by it even though mm -hmm. it, i um had a lot of choices and I was mm -hmm. really informed and I planned everything and was very happy with my experience, but walked away with a completely just unsatisfactory experience that um, yeah. I still carry the trauma from. So yeah. all of this is where I've come <laughs> to um, yep. a uh, childbirth educator. Yeah. Um, with evidence-based birth specifically. When I was training to be a doula, I took the first training I could find after the calling because I didn't want to chicken out. Right, because <laughs> I was like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. I was like, okay, I'll just take the first training and see what this is all about. And of course, it was like opening the can of worms. Um, yep. If you're listening to this podcast, surely you have an idea of what it's like taking the lid off the can of worms. It's like, oh my goodness, <laughs> it's like a whole third of what you need to know about being a human being was kept yep. in a secret, a secret from the rest of us, from most of us. So um, <laughs> we learned about evidence-based birth in um, my training. Um, you, I think we might have had the same trainer, maybe not. Um, mm. I had Nicole here, mm. at, uh, Graceful Fusion. Um, thank God that she was the one that had the like the first training coming up when I signed up. I could have yeah. uh, had a different experience, but I I was really For sure. uh, fortunate that it turned out to be her. Um, mm. We learned about evidence based birth as a company um, mm -hmm. because it's a fascinating resource. Like it's really well known as a podcast and a website where you get some information. Um, but I wasn't qualified to be an educator with evidence-based birth at that time. At that time, mm. the requirement was that you had, well, still is, that you had to have at least one year of experience as a birth worker, 
there was an application process. And um, so I figured, okay, that's fine. So I went ahead and trained with Lamaz while I was trying to get ready for yep. uh, meeting the qualifications for that. And then they closed the program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Temporarily they closed it because they wanted to restructure it to address the black maternal health crisis. Yeah. Um, it wasn't centered enough in, in their program. So uh, yeah. when it reopened, I was just shy of one year. Um, mm -hmm. So I applied anyway and petitioned to get accepted. And mm -hmm. technically when the training started, I had made my one year of experience. <laughs> and um, I was really, really incentivized to do the work to get ready for it because they were having an in-person retreat during the pandemic, of course, that had been put off for a couple of years because of the pandemic and it was on my birthday. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to make yes. it in person <laughs> to this event because I don't take vacation. I was like, this will be my motivation. This will be my motivation. So, Evidence-based birth as a childbirth class. It's actually um, layered. It's very layered. Their, their whole like whole organization that does a lot of work and provides a lot of resources. Um, Kaylee has surely has talked a lot about what evidence-based birth offers, but um, founded by a researcher, a nurse who's a researcher, and she. she translates information, researches information and, and research studies and gathers the data and translates it so that consumers mm -hmm. and also birth workers can understand it and use it so that we can have better birthing experiences. Um, because unfortunately our system is not designed for us to have good experiences. Yep. Um, and to give us uh, access to that so we can, we can control that experience. Um, so there's a podcast, there's the website, there's the research studies and all of this, but there's two levels of being an instructor with them. So the base level is um, a license to teach some small workshops that teach you about advocacy mm -hmm. and how to advocate for yourself or for your clients um, in the system the way that we have it now and, and the way that the maternal health system is designed in the US um, for profit, essentially. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's not evidence-based. And it mm -hmm. takes about average of 17 years, but between 15 and 20 years for new research to be incorporated into the medical system. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole generation, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yep. she gives us, so evidence-based birth gives us the information so that we can take it to our providers and, mm -hmm. and implement it in our own experiences. So the, um, and I had to qualify on that level, I teach workshops to birth workers, to labor and delivery nurses, and obviously to the community um, on how the system works and how to navigate it. Mm. And this is awesome because uh, if you are taking a childbirth class, let's say like with Kaylee, and you just want to take like a one or two hour workshop mm -hmm. um, that's very specific on how to advocate in the system and get access to the articles, um, we could do that. That's awesome. Um, like you don't have to come through the whole program. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then after you qualify there, you can apply to qualify on the second level, which took me a little while to pass because I was a little bit underqualified, <laughs> right? So I had to do, uh, it took me a few tries to do the test. <laughs> to pass it. Um, uh, when I got to the childbirth class, the childbirth class is way different than any other class, um, childbirth class that I had ever seen um, because it's a hybrid program where it's mm -hmm. mostly um videos recorded by the founder uh that teaches you about childbirth and actually the whole childbirth system like what i would teach in the lamas class is basically taught in the orientation course of the uh evidence-based birth <laughs> childbirth class yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a six-week program <laughs> yeah. you're like weeks. you're learning my intro <laughs> in your other class exactly exactly so i was like okay so what i'm used to teaching as a childbirth class is just an introduction yeah <laughs> like class through them. So that's why it right. took a lot of prep to get ready for it. But it's a six yeah. week class. Um, and do a lot of the, the learning and the science part and like the technical parts are in the um, videos. And then our weekly sessions, the first session and the last session are about two hours long. And then there's weekly sessions in between that are about an hour, depending on 
how long they, you know, we need. They're discussion. They're more like coaching sessions yeah. and we get deeper and uh, get deeper into what you learned there and how you're going to apply it in real life. And I yeah. love this. And and the students love it too. We do a lot of um, like role playing, like, okay, so um, let's say you have a partner with you. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, partner, let's role play. We just got to the hospital and you know, your, your partner is in labor and they've got their headphones in and they're not talking to the nurses and you're talking to the nurses. I'm the nurse. You're, you're the partner. Let's role play it. Mm -hmm. We do this kind of practice. Um, we work on you know, doing the birth plan and work on prepping for postpartum and, and all of these so that um, it's really great to know what to ask for, but it's harder to advocate for yourself and speak up and say, I don't want that. I want this instead, um, mm -hmm. especially when you get pushed back. I think that yeah, people expect when you go into a hospital, I'm just going to use that for an example. I'm not trying to demonize hospitals. It's just yeah. realistically um, like 91% of us have babies in the hospital yeah. right, or births are happening in the hospital. So let's just be realistic that going into the hospital, almost everybody's very nice. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, uh, there's nobody like Maleficent is not standing at the front door saying you can't have that, right? <laughs> They're all great people um, that you may feel very attached to and very supported by. Um, and you really had um, a traumatic experience because they weren't listening to you. So we really practice mm -hmm. the different ways that they need to ask for things or maybe need to speak to things and also what to mm -hmm. do if, uh, if you go through your whole list of things and you still don't get what you're looking for, mm -hmm. what to do then? And also yeah. what to do afterwards. Um, mm -hmm. If you did have an experience you weren't planning on and you need to do mm -hmm. something um, to follow up with it and yeah. where those complaints would go. Um, most people don't know that the complaints are basically customer service complaints. So they stay inside the mm -hmm. hospital. Uh, <laughs> they're not like legal issues or anything. And mm -hmm. that's not what you're, that most of the people, almost everybody who has a baby um, has been raised as a, a female in the United States. And we are really discouraged from speaking up and complaining about things. So for you to actually yeah. file a complaint with a hospital about an experience you had takes a lot of, a lot of courage. And yep. you don't expect it to go to the customer service department and die there. So yeah. we talk about these kinds of things also, how to prepare mm -hmm. for that. So the classes are actually a lot of fun. And pretty much all childbirth classes are a lot of fun, right? Because there's a lot of activity, like, and a labor rehearsal and all of that. But right. um, yeah, that's what makes it a bit different from other yeah. um, workshops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, it's funny that you bring up, like, people being kind. Oh, like, I think when we think about, like, wanting different, different care than maybe what the, like, hospital policies are, right? it's right. not that people are mean it's that you're like sometimes kindly gaslit <laughs> in the midst of the process you are you know yeah. or that their hands are tied by the policies of the hospital in some cases you know and so so it's not even i think when you when you go in talking about like policies being not evidence based it's not the nurses that set those policies you know it's not even always the providers that set those policies like we're talking about hospital administration and so it's Absolutely. way higher than them even yeah and it doesn't mean they don't have control over how they treat you and you you don't have agency you certainly do but it's not coming in like you versus the nurses you know like that's not the scenario it's right 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 <laughs> and and you come in and you're expecting to have a fight with nurses and then you're like oh she's really nice yeah and, yeah. and and nobody comes out satisfied from the experience, right, right, right. but you know, we're all just a part of it. And and that's a big part of, um, like we do an activity um, in like our mini workshops that are for mm -hmm. people that are not taking our full, system, for full class. We do an activity um, where we lay out like the, the, um, the power and how it's distributed in the hospital yeah. and you know, in a group, 25 people involved with a birth in a hospital and the power is very last given to the the mom 
you know, sometimes the baby is above that. The guy has more power than the mom um, and the mm -hmm. partner and maybe even the doula. Yep. And then the doctor, like not even, doctor's not even all the way at the top. Um, yeah. and, and the decisions are made by people who don't even know your name. Uh, so yeah. it, it's really um, an insufficient system for almost everybody except for the profiteers. And it's frustrating yeah. for everybody and everybody's going through different yeah. experiences in it. And that's why we also have workshops for people who are working inside of the, of the yeah. um, system the, and the hospital system so that they can help change policies and, and have better experiences too. Because I don't know any nurses who said they got into nursing because they want to harm people. Doctors oh, either. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's challenging. And birth workers, we have a, a very short lifespan as far mm -hmm. as uh, our careers go because of the secondary trauma and yep. other issues. But yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that nurses and doctors stay in the system because it's a lot harder for them to just quit. Yeah. Um, because they have so much invested. Mm -hmm. And all of that they're bringing into your birth space. So yep. it's great to know how to work with them. And, and so mm -hmm. we can all be on a team together and get you a really great experience because having a baby is an extremely <laughs> transformative experience. There's yep. nothing else like I've been trying to figure out how you can have the transformation without having a baby. And I don't know <laughs> any process, any way that you can get the benefit, like get the transformation without the birth. Yep. And my goodness gracious, it's enough on its own. <laughs> yeah. And I do yep. really, really, really strongly believe that people who have birthing experiences that they have, like you said, some agency and control over really, really, really dictates what kind of parents they're going to be. And sure. it's really yeah. great to have parents coming through, even if things didn't go the way they wanted to, feeling like they um, matter, that they have some decisions mm -hmm. that they can make that the best care possible is what they receive. It's so much easier for them to uh, handle their postpartum time and make decisions as a parent. And, yeah. you know, I really do believe that the fastest way to change the world is in birth work. Mm, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thank you. Like we need that on a t-shirt. Fastest way to change the world. Is <laughs> birth work. <laughs> <laughs> I so will now, buy it if now. you make that shirt. <laughs> well, you well, know what? Well, that's the, the thing I didn't talk about is that I love starting businesses. So right. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> that's a separate that's podcast story. episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I recently talked about hybrid classes. And so I mentioned yeah. that, like, the way that you all, I mean, I had a basic understanding of how the class was run, you know. And yeah. so um, the way that it is run is really interesting to me as a person who's created a self-paced class, because I think mm -hmm. that is kind of a lovely, like, I mean, hybrid is the word, but a lovely, you know, dual system where you get some face-to-face -face time, even if it's virtual, with an mm -hmm. actual birth professional and someone who can help you kind of apply this to yourself and also troubleshoot a little bit and practice like you're saying and also you have some of it on your own schedule and time which makes it so sure. much more doable especially in a like multiple series kind of class you know where it's like i don't necessarily have all five thursdays free but i have right? one or two right. you know <laughs> i love the hybrid class model i did try to design my own class um mm -hmm. and get it together um similar model, but I was able to get into the program before I finished that because I have so many other things to work on. And I'm <laughs> so glad that I was able to get into it. Now, um, the evidence-based birth childbirth class has always been virtual. So yeah. when the pandemic came, or mostly virtual, the first two classes are supposed to be in person, but it was very easy to, for them to change it into virtual experience. Um, the pandemic came, there was an explosion in enrollments because um, there weren't many instructors, but also it was yep. already virtual and it was a very easy um, transition. And mm -hmm. I am actually a Gen Z, I mean, Gen Xer, excuse me, not a Gen Z, or mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> a, a, a late Gen Xer. Uh -huh. And 
I guess, until I got in the birth work, that most of the people who are having babies right now are in a different generation than I am. And yeah. let's just be honest, like, everything you need to know, you can get on the internet for free. But what an yeah. instructor or, or a teacher does is help you to navigate that information and find it faster and easier and mm -hmm. kind of wade through all of that nonsense. And so I love yeah. teaching gen, um, like millennials and, and Gen Zers in a way that learn best, or you guys who are listening learn best. Like, mm -hmm. here's all the information. You can go through it at your own pace and check it all out and, and you know, see what it all is. And then we can meet and we can have discussions about it. You know, when I was coming mm -hmm. up in school, like I learned very well from a classic environment, uh, classroom. I love having a lecture and then mm -hmm. like taking a multiple choice test at the end or writing an <laughs> essay. Like that's how I like to learn. Yeah. But that's not the way people learn anymore. That is so boring to everyone. <laughs> um, nobody has time to go and sit for like eight hours every week right. um and get instructed in this so you can really make it work for you and i i think it's really really amazing and i'm glad that that's something that you've been looking into that i think it's really um i don't know apt to i guess to what mm -hmm. today's learners um today's people want to learn and people today yeah. are really used to learning online at this point yep. And it's really almost an insult to have them sit down and listen to you talk for a long time when uh, it's like, no, here's all the information. You can go through it and navigate it the way you like. Here it is presented different ways. So if you need it to be like this or like that, like and you have a different learning style. So it's really um, very realistic, I think, um, for the way yeah. that um, we, we live in 2022. Fast paced, yeah. information available and so we it's really really um appropriate for yeah. our, our people yeah. who are having babies today yeah mm -hmm. well one of the things i think is such a drawback to the fact that you can find all sorts of information online is you also find all sorts of crappy information online <laughs> tons of it everybody's an authority on the internet that's right all right <laughs> yeah and so one of the parts of having it kind of curated for you right is that you know what to trust about it. The number of mm -hmm. times I've had someone say like, oh, I read about this thing. And I'm like, your hospital doesn't even have that thing, right? Like, but you don't right. know that you don't have the context for it. You're just like, that sounds lovely. And I'm like, if you show up in labor thinking you're gonna get that, that is not something your facility even has available to you. Right. That's gonna <laughs> rock your whole plan, you know? Yeah. So no, that's part of it sense. too, is being able to actually like hone in on like what's true, what's accurate and what is realistic. Because if you're going into a scenario of a birth setting where you're like, oh, this is my plan to have like all of these amenities. And then you're like, well, have you checked to see if your hospital has those amenities? Because many of them Correct. don't, you know, many of them don't. And most of them are, um, are not keen on um, your birth plan. <laughs> right. yeah. and your dreams that you've had and mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of people going into the hospital trying to make it a home birth experience and it's just that's just not going to happen and mm -hmm. uh it might be a really pretty hospital in part of town where the wealthiest people in the world live <laughs> i'm not naming any names right now <laughs> But if you are going into that hospital and you are not yeah. 22 in perfect health and spontaneously delivering, you're having a C-section. And let's just, well, and you know, like <laughs> white in most cases. And you know. white, right? Yeah, right. And so, like, with the heterosexual relationship, still go in there. <laughs> yeah. In a heterosexual relationship, and maybe the doctor might be best friends with your mom you're probably going to be having a c-section and if you yeah. don't want to have a c-section you must be realistic about going into this setting this setting you yeah. know and 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 yeah there is a lot of romance like you said and, and people planning yeah. and expectations and it's really hurtful to go in and not be able to have that experience but that's why we we want to give you the information in advance and and that's yeah. really where the difference is and figuring it out from the internet or working with a specialist like kaylee um who has curated the information and can really tell you like i've visibly yeah. been there and i can tell you yeah. what 
that experience can look like so you can make these kinds of decisions um and, yeah, and be yeah. realistic mm-hmm. and be happy yeah. with your experiences yeah and a professional like leslie <laughs> and a professional like leslie that's right for sure <laughs> I'm not the only one here that can teach you these awesome things. That's right. And we're not in competition. Like, I, you know, like, yeah. I really wish that this was not something that people had to pay to, to get the information yeah. on. You know, like, our yeah. grandmas were born at home with their, you know, everybody was born at home. And, and yeah. it, it was a community experience. You know, it was never mm-hmm. supposed to be alone in a hospital at like a factory setting like that was never mm-hmm. the way birth was done and so very recently so yeah you know yeah it should it should be free and it should be information we all have but that's not the way that it is right now so yeah yep yep the more of us that have the information the better yeah here here <laughs> <laughs> so well, we um Oh, I keep losing my Yay. earrings. I knew that was it's gonna okay. happen. <laughs> um, we right. need to wrap keep up for real. today so that it's so it stays kind of nice and short. Um, but Leslie, one of the things that I like to put in the show notes is how people can connect with you. So um, if you have any particular like classes coming up or anything that you want to share, I'd love for you to talk about them for a minute, or I can just put the links in if that's easier. So I have tons of stuff coming up. So <laughs> of course you do. Um, yeah, <laughs> I really am um, focusing on education. Uh-huh. I would love to be um, offering education on uh, the, like mostly education classes, like a uh, center, but I do have a lot of things on my plate. So the easiest yeah. way to get in touch with me right now is on Instagram at okay. Leslie the doula. Perfect. Okay. I'm still working on my website. I'm always been working awesome. on my website. <laughs> That's um, the okay. name of my business is Peridot Birds or Peridot, P-E-R-I-D-O-T. Birds, mm-hmm. you can email me there. Um, I try to be easy to get in touch with. And so maybe I'm not that easy. <laughs> but I can be reached at hello at peridotbirds.com. P-E-R-I-D-O-T. B I R T H S dot com. But the easiest to remember is Leslie the doula. Okay. Awesome. Okay. I'll make sure all those links are in there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll make sure they're there so people can connect with you. Um, and I have really enjoyed this conversation because you're lovely I and also Thank because you. you're a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, of course. Of course. And I'm in the North, I'm in the uh, DC area, specifically Northern yeah. Virginia, but um, virtually yeah, yeah. we're available across the world. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I think that is also, I mean, I know we're ending, but that's another thing that I love about virtual education is it expands the options for folks that are in smaller areas where like DC, totally. we have loads of options and we take that for granted, you know, but yeah. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. DC Amazing. is a very special place in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mostly because you and I live here. <laughs> Mostly because of that. Yeah, but we can talk about that another time. Maybe over coffee or, or margaritas or right. something. Because <laughs> uh, outside the D.C. area is a whole different. We definitely live in a little bubble here. A little unique space. Yes. 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 Yeah, it's extremely so, diverse. Um, mm-hmm. Right. Um, yes, for sure. And lots of options, which is a good thing. Um, so totally. this is not the last of our episodes around childbirth ed. We're going to have a few more interviews, a few more types of classes that I do not teach that you can hear from other wonderful people. Um, and then we're going to be moving on to doulas is our next series. Like how do you hire one? Do you need one? Et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so until the next episode, I wish you well-informed consent filled births. These episodes are edited and produced by Kaylee Harad, as I'm sure you can probably tell. And um, our amazing music is credited in the show notes as well. So we look forward to seeing you on the next episode. And in the meantime, have wonderful and consent-filled births.